वैसे मैं अभी जल्दी से बता देता हूँ कि बेंजीन से ना शुरू होता है ए टू ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सो बेंजीन का कार्बन जो है वो एस पी टू हाइब्रिडाइज है इसका मतलब है कि कार्बन जो है ना वो तीन बॉन्ड्स बना रहा होता है तीन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स चौथा ऑबल उसका फालतू का कुछ नहीं कर रहा होता तो वट हैपन जिस कि बेंजीन ये चीज होती है कि जिसके अंदर कार्बन इज मेकिंग ऑल्टरनेट डबल बॉन्ड्स तो वट हैपन जिस कि कार्बन का जो आइटम है ना वो तीन बॉन्ड्स बना रहा होता है हर कार्बन आइटम इट्स मेकिंग चले पीपल है अच्छा सो इट्स मेकिंग इट्स मेकिंग थ्री नॉर्मल बॉन्ड्स एंड अच्छा एंड द फोर्थ इलेक्ट्रॉन इज नॉट डूइंग एनीथिंग वो फिर पाइप बॉन्डिंग करता है बट वट हैपन इज के जस्ट लाइक अ डबल बॉन्ड द इंटायर सिक्स पी ऑर्बिटल्स ऑफ ईच कार्बन आइटम दे एंड अप ओवरलैपिंग और फिर वो जब ओवरलैप करते हैं तो दे इज अ रिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड अबव एंड बिलो द बेंजीन रिंग विच इज नोन एज द बेंजीन पाई इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड तो इट्स लाइक एन ईथीन और एल्किन मॉलिक्यूल के कार्बन हैज एल्किन में बस दो पी ऑबल्स होते हैं बेंजीन यू हैव सिक्स पी ऑबल्स दैट आर ओवरलैपिंग लेकिन इसको ना क्लास कैंड में जस्ट ब्रीफली गो ओवर दिस वंस मोर ठीक है तो हम और मैं वीडियो लेक्चर्स भी भेज दूंगा इसके स्टार्टिंग तो वो हम कवर कर लेंगे थोड़ा सा फिर से ना वो ब्रीफ क्विक रिकैप के बेंजीन का इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड था लेकिन आई टोल यू के इलेक्ट्रॉन इंडस्टी इज नॉट वेरी हाई व्हिच इज वाई ब्रोमीन इज नॉट पोलराइज वेरी मच क्योंकि इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड है इसका पी ऑबल इट्स ओवरलैपिंग विद द कार्बन ऑन टॉप एंड ऑल्सो ओवरलैपिंग विद द कार्बन एट द बॉटम which is why you need a catalyst fbr3 so bromination of benzene happens with a catalyst you need to polarize this molecule because the electron density over here is not enough to push this electron on the right uh it needs to polarize this molecule so this negative charge is not very high this positive charge is not very high which is why it's not really that attracted to the benzene electron cloud तो कैटलिस आगे से यू एड कैटलिस एंड द कैटलिस डज द रेस्ट ऑफ द पुलिंग दिस इज दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड इज पुशिंग दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू द राइट वेयर एज दिस आयरन ओवर हियर इज पुलिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम द राइट व्हिच इज व्हाई द ब्रोमीन मॉलिक्यूल हेट्रोलिटिक दिस हेट्रोलिटिक फिशन द ब्रोमीन मॉलिक्यूल ब्रेक्स इनटू टू एंड द बीआर पॉजिटिव इट गोस एंड देन इट अट्रैक्ट्स वन ऑफ द पी ऑर्बिटल्स एंड बॉन्ड्स विद दैट and the benzene electron cloud becomes electron deficient and the next step is that it needs its electron back because there's one electron that is that is missing or if as a if it's missing the h then gives the electron back and the benzene electron cloud is gets reformed so as a result what happens is bromine gets substituted so this is the entire mechanism of the reaction that uh, bromination bromine molecule gets polarized the positive bromine bonds and as a the positive the positive bromine bonds with it uh takes one of the electron from the benzene h gives the electron back and as a result uh the benzene electron cloud is reformed so that was the bromination mechanism this me this understanding this is very important that uh, compared to an alkene in alkenes the pi bonding is very localized its the electrons are overlapping right over here so the electron density is really high compared to a benzene where you have three double bonds and eventually what happens is that all the p orbitals they mix up uh instead of overlapping happening at a particular point because each carbon atom has a p orbital instead of the overlapping happening at a particular localized area the overlapping happens almost everywhere and as a result the electron density gets more distributed i mean this p orbital not only overlaps with the carbon on the left side but it also overlaps with the carbon that is on the right side and that applies to all the carbon atoms so the electron density is lesser it's more distributed it has a lower charge density which is why it has a lower polarizing power so the main difference between 
uh, bromination of an alkene and the bromination of benzene was the bromination of alkenes was a lot easier the electron density in an alkene is concentrated at a specific point which is why the bromine molecule gets polarized uh, very easily iske jo the electrons over here they get repelled very very easily this becomes negative this becomes positive so the bromine bond breaks heterolytically very very easily but that is not the case in in benzene in benzene this electron density is not uh, it's it's so distributed that it doesn't have enough strength to knock these electrons to the right which is why you need a catalyst on the other side and we did nitration as well that was the other that was the other reaction nitration of benzene that was electrophilic substitution ki we did all of this ke uh, in that case what happens you had a similar reaction these were the conditions if you add 50 to 60 degree centigrade temperature and concentrate sulfuric acid nitric acid added what happens is that one of the hydrogens in benzene gets substituted by no2 and the mechanism is kind of exactly the same the first step of the mechanism was ke you uh, the concentrated sulfuric acid and nitric acid they react and when they react an no2 plus electrophile is produced it's something that is interested in electrons so the no2 plus one sees the pi electron cloud in benzene sees one of the p orbitals or it pulls that p orbital and bonds with it so the no2 over here bonds with this carbon p orbital so the p orbital over here is missing now uh, so the benzene electron cloud becomes partial again and it it gets a positive charge because somebody took its electron like one of the p orbital over here that carbon had was taken up by no2 over here and the next step is the benzene wants to be stabilized it wants its electrons back so what it does is okay, it takes it sees its hydrogen electrons and pulls them and the p orbital gets reformed and the hydrogen leaves and the hydrogen goes and joins the hso4 which forms ends up forming h2so4 so this is the mechanism of the reaction that you're going to draw in your exam no2 plus 1 comes in the benzene electron cloud becomes partial and in the next step uh sir why didn't we need a catalyst in this reaction no you did need a catalyst you needed oh, okay h2 h2so4 was a catalyst i mean in this one you had to produce the electrophile first because because the benzene wasn't able to polarize the nitric acid on its own it wasn't able to sort of repel the positive h and knock knock that out and uh Uh, extract the NO2 plus one from it uh, because because the electron density wasn't very high. So remember the H2SO4 is acting as a as a catalyst. Okay, clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So to the end, mera I'll I'll discuss. You know, ne abhi ni kya wala I'll discuss this right at the end of after the class. Okay. So first I'll go over them. Now. we had started discussing benzene derivative compounds and i told you that uh, remember benzene is carbon six carbon atoms each carbon atom i mean, make sure you you have this picture of benzene with you in your in your in your head this one like think of it as three alternating double bonds and they kind of get mixed up which is why you get this electron cloud so remember the carbon each one of them is bonded to 1h you don't show the hydrogen atoms in the skeletal formula so now if we go back so i have a, i have a benzene ring and these are derivative compounds that just like a carbon chain think of benzene as a carbon chain in as you studied cake if you attach a double bond to a carbon chain that becomes an alkene if you attach an oh to a carbon chain that becomes an alcohol if it if you attach a, a c double bond o to it it becomes an aldehyde or a ketone so think of benzene in a similar way that think of benzene and you can attach different things to it uh, remember each one of them over here is a hydrogen atom and you can replace it by any other group uh, so if you if you replace it with a carbon chain a normal carbon chain then that is called an arene uh, this arenes are basically benzene which is attached to a carbon chain uh, now, and this is not exactly benzene remember this is going to be treated as a slightly different functional group 
just like alkane and halogenoalkanes are treated as, or alkanes and alkenes are treated as different functional groups. So don't think of it that this is going to behave exactly like a benzene. It's not going to behave exactly like a benzene. It's going to be very, it's, it's obviously going to behave very similarly, similar to a benzene, but the reactions will slightly be different uh, because of the extra carbon chain over here. We could, we'll discuss those reactions later. Uh, then you have halogen derivatives, like you have a chlorobenzene. This one is 1,3-dichlorobenzene. I mean, two chlorine, chlorine, so it's dichloro. One is at one second, and the third one is at carbon number three. You've got benzoic acid, you've got uh, phenol. I said, when you have an OH, that's not an alcohol, that's a phenol, that's a completely different functional group. This entire thing. Benzene with OH has nothing, it's, it's not an alcohol. Remember that. Phenols are slightly different. They're a completely different set of functional groups. Uh, you have phenylamine. Uh, when benzene has NH2, remember this is not an amine, this is a phenylamine, which is different from an amine. This is a benzaldehyde. Also remember this is not exactly an aldehyde. It's going to be slightly different from a from a from an aldehyde. As anyway, so you can you can have all these derivative compounds. <laughs> Haji. In benzene basically we have like um a pi electron cloud. So what is the maximum number of functional groups that can attach? Like only three? Or can there be six? It can all six, I mean uh yeah, no. But there are only three double bonds. But there are only three double bonds. No, no, no. Though they're all mixed up. They're all mixed up. I'm going to talk about this. Where are they? Uh, okay, the double bonds are mixed up, right? I'm talking about these hydrogens. These can be substituted by anything. Like all of them can be substituted. You could have chlorines everywhere. You could have uh, NO2s no, everywhere. No, yeah. So six chlorines at one time. Like, oh yeah, you can do that. Okay. You can do that. That will not that will not change this structure. The benzene ring would still be there. Uh, you just side well atoms and you can you can kind of change them. You can you can have any other atom on that. TK, is that clear? Yes. And so now coming. Coming back to this. Last time what we discussed was that. So what happens to the benzene electron cloud when you have something attached to it? And we did the uh, 246 directing group. So uh, let me just quickly copy that and uh, redo this. Just take, let's take this benzene. And we did, we did the two four six directing effect or directing group. This was what we last time discussed. So what I told you was, and let me correct this quickly. So you've you've got six carbon atoms. That's this one. Now each carbon atom is sp2 hybridized, so it's making three normal bonds, and the fourth electron is still buzzing in its p orbital. Carbon atom, three normal bonds, three electrons, and the fourth electron. So the fourth electrons they all start overlapping, and you get a benzene pi electron cloud. Now last time what I discussed was that you have groups that have electron donating effect. Uh, they have they push electron densities towards other atoms. So for example. Uh, who are your 246 directing groups? Uh, these are alkyl chains. So I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about the main ones, alkyl chains. You'll have uh, NH2. You'll have OH. So these are some of the electron donating groups. What I mean by that is that if I have a carbon chain attached to instead of a hydrogen atom, I've got a carbon chain that's attached to it. Let's say I have CH2, CH2, and CH3. I have a propyl chain that's attached to it. Now this one is no, going to be known as a propyl benzene, and it's an erene. It's not, a, it's not exactly a benzene, it's an erene now. It's a derivative compound. So what this alkyl chains, alkyl chains do, they have an electron donating effect. What they do is that Whichever group is attached to them, they have this tendency to push their electrons slightly onto the other group. 
alkyl chains have an electron releasing effect. Uh, so whenever they are attached to something, some of the negative charge gets pushed onto the neighboring group that's attached to it. So in this case, next to the alkyl chains, you've got this benzene electron cloud that's attached. So what will happen is that the electron density will slightly start to increase uh, on the right side. The electron density will become slightly higher on this side because of the electron donating effect or the electron releasing effect of, of this alkyl group. So the alkyl group is pushing electron density. So, so this side becomes, previously the electrons were evenly distributed. There was no side which had more electrons. There was no side which had less electrons. The electrons were equally distributed around the whole benzene. But now things are going to be slightly different. That when you have an alkyl chain, the electrons get pushed onto this side on the right side and the negative charge over here becomes bigger. And what happens to the other electrons? All the other electrons, they get repelled because of the higher negative charge. And they become slightly more concentrated at this particular carbon atom. So the electron density becomes higher at this carbon atom. So no longer is the benzene ring a perfect benzene ring. Previously, it was a perfect benzene ring, electron density evenly distributed, but not anymore. You've got an alkyl chain. It pushes electron density uh, onto any group that's attached to it. In this case, benzene, so electron density is higher at this point, and it's higher at the opposite side, TK. Is this part clear? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Sam, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so now, uh, so the electron density is higher on one side. So what is basically happening is, the reason we call it 2, 4, 6 directing group is that if this is position number one, like if, if the alkyl chain is attached at carbon position number one, then this one would be carbon position number two. And this one over here is going to be uh, position three. This one would be position number four. Uh, this one over here will be five and this one would be carbon number carbon number six so what is happening is that the electron density is going to be higher at three of the positions it's going to be higher at uh, position number six it's going to be higher at position number two as well and it's going to be higher at position number four which is why you call it two four six directing group because if you attach an alkyl chain to a benzene ring then the electron density increases at position numbers two four and six you don't call it six which is why i've put it in brackets because this position and this position are kind of the same position i mean you flip it around it still looks exactly the same so uh usually two and six positions are considered to be the same position but anyways now the now in the previous scenario the benzene electron cloud was perfect but now it's not electron density is higher at this end and it's higher at the complete opposite end so if this were to undergo an electrophilic substitution reaction, the electrophile is going to be more interested because the electrophile is interested in electrons. Uh, like if you have an NO2 plus one floating around, like if I have an NO2 plus one electrophile, then this particular electrophile is a lot more, it's going to be a lot more, it's, it's not that it's not going to be interested in the electrons over here, it's just that the electron density at position number three and five is going to be lesser. So the NO2 plus one is going to be more attracted to positions two, uh, four, or six, because positive charge is going to be attracted to uh, the positions where there are more electrons. So NO2 plus electrophile is more attracted two positions, two, four, and six. Is this clear? Yes. So it's more attracted to positions two, four, and six. Unlike the previous case, like if I do the nitration part again, if I do the nitration part again, if you had a perfect benzene ring, the electron clouds were evenly distributed. So this NO2 plus one could attack any of the P orbitals. They were all identical to it. Uh, it could be interested in this p orbital. It could uh, gain electrons from this p orbital. So it could be any of the p orbitals. Uh, but now that's not the scenario. In 
in a two four six dating group if it's if it's attached the na2 plus one is going to be more there's going to be a higher probability of it getting attracted to positions two four and six so what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about electrophilic substitution of adenes the first one so we're going to talk about electrophilic i mean we did talk about benzene now we're going to talk about about adenes so we're going to one by one talk about electrophilic substitution of all benzene benzene derivative compounds so this is the first one of adenes now the first thing is um so the first thing is that uh, the electron donating effect of an alkyl chain is not very high it is there but it's not it's not a massive effect i mean this thing that's happening it's not a drastic i mean there's not going to be a drastic uh, difference the negative charge would over here would only be slightly higher and the negative charge over here would only be just very slightly higher so electrophilic uh, substitution of adenes kind of is the same as benzene except for the 2 4 6 directing group so if i do this for an adene let's say i take a simple adene i've got ch3 and i've got uh and i have got a benzene and it's so so because of uh the electron donating effect electron density is higher at these positions and all the other electrons they get knocked to the other side to the opposite side so the electron density is higher at the complete opposite side so positions 2 4 and 6 so first thing bromination let's do bromination so conditions are the same you need br2 you need fbr3 as a catalyst or if you want to do chlorination then what you would need is uh, cl2 plus fecl3 is the is the catalyst now uh and exactly the same way everything would be uh where is the bromination reaction everything would be exactly the same uh the electron density is still not very high uh so the polarization would still need this catalyst over here so that it can pull the electrons from the other side so that this bromine uh becomes negative and that other bromine becomes positively charged so everything would kind of remain exactly the same except for one factor which is 2 4 6 directing effect so the result would be that the bromination will ha happen at there would be two different types of molecules that are going to be produced in one of them the bromine will get attached to position number so it's going to get attached to position number 2 and in the other one the bromine is going to get attached to position number position number 4 so you're going to get and the other molecule that's going to be produced is going to be hpr in both cases so so it's going to be hpr molecule that's going to be produced that's the byproduct and over here as well there's going to be hpr that's going to be produced but we're not interested in hpr uh what we are interested in is uh this is two direct directing group and this one is four uh the reason i i don't draw six is because two and six are kind of exactly the i mean they're kind of exactly the same so two directing and four directing i mean if i put it over here it's going to be exactly the same so it doesn't really matter and the name of this molecule is going to be i mean this one would be called a uh, two bromo methyl benzene because the bromine is attached at position number 2 uh, and the other one would be called a uh, 4 bromo methyl methyl benzene uh, because it was methyl benzene but now it's there's a bromine attached at position number 4 as well tk is this clear this is what's happening in adenes is this clear yes sir sir can't there be like three brs attached at 2 4 and 
like at the same. Acha, that thing. Uh, usually, there's only one bromine attached because the reaction is not that vigorous. There, there would be other reactions where uh, bromines will get attached at all positions. I'm going to talk about that. So, so at the moment, uh, the reaction is not very fast. There's another concept which uh, goes with this, and that is, and that concept is. what happens to the electron density on the benzene because the other group that's attached to it it's pushing electrons so overall what happens is like the overall effect is that the electron density increases so we call this effect that uh, i mean we call it that the benzene ring becomes activated uh, when you have an electron donating group what electron donating groups do is that they activate the benzene so electron donating groups uh make or increase the electron density overall on the benzene so it increases the electron density on benzene and because of that so there's going to be more attraction for electrophiles so there's going to be more reaction overall the reaction speed would also be faster so more attraction for electrophiles and we call this that it's it's now an activated benzene <clears throat> acha but in this case uh the activation is not that high but it's pushing the electron density but remember the electron donating effect of an alkyl chain is like really really small i mean so this whole thing the effect is like really tiny it's really small so it's not a massive effect so so it is activated it's only slightly activated so if the overall electron density increases there's going to be more attraction for electrophiles so the reaction of an arene would be slightly very slightly faster compared to a compared to a benzene so it's just so there's no major activation just a very slight so it's going to be very slightly faster come in comparison to a benzene is that clear yes sir so and the uh and the other one was uh, nitration acha what happened in so the other one was nitration the only thing is you just have to change uh, the group so from bromination it would just be uh, no2 the conditions would kind of be the same you will have concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid and the temperature is going to be around 55 to or 55 degrees centigrade that's it or 50 to 60 uh the group that's going to be attached in this case would be uh so the group that's going to be attached in this case would be no2 that would be the electrophile so no2 will either get attached to carbon number 2 or it will get attached to carbon number carbon number 4 and it would be called this would be called nitrobenzene or so this one would be called 2 methyl nitrobenzene uh and the other one the nitro has a higher presence but you don't have to go into details about naming because benzene uh, systematic nomenclature doesn't really exist so you don't have to worry too much about and this one would be 4 methyl nitro nitrobenzene i said that's the first thing uh electrophilic substitution of arenes and the mechanism everything would be exactly the same except for the 246 directing group or 246 directing effect 
Kike, is this part clear? The Dean, is this clear? Sam, is this clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, the other part is that uh, uh, there are other 246 directing groups. So you have other benzene derivative compounds, one of them. Uh, I wrote down three of them. Alkyl chains, you've got alkyl chain makes it an adene. You can attach NH2, NH2 to it and you can also attach OH to it. So let's talk about electrophilic substitution of, of phenols. And that's also 246 directing. It's a 246 directing group. So electrophilic substitution of phenols. And this is still the same topic, the 246 directing effect. Now, in this case, what happens if you have a benzene? So, if you have a benzene, so the benzene ring will be attached to an OH group. So, there's going to be there's going to be an OH group that's going to be attached to it. Now, what does the OH do? The first thing is let's comment on the electron donating effect and let's, uh, so everything kind of remains exactly the same. So I'm just going to, going to copy the same image. Uh, so things kind of remain exactly the same as an alkyl chain, except that this time you have, uh, let me rub this off. So instead of an alkyl chain, over here, you've got you've got an OH group. So there's an O, and there is an there's an H that is attached to it. Now, the OH group also has an electron donating effect, but it's got a much bigger electron donating effect compared to an alkyl chain. This one is highly activated. So, so you use the word highly activated for this. So the benzene over here in phenols is it's the same concept except that now it's highly accurate. Why is it highly accurate? That's the first question. The, and the reason for that is that oxygen has these really high charge density lone pairs. It's got four electrons that are not doing anything. What happens to those four electrons? Those four electrons, they kind of overlap, start to overlap or get mixed up with the benzene electron cloud. So that increases the negative charge on the benzene on this side massively. Uh, the benzene electron cloud over here, because the four electrons. Why do they overlap? I mean, like their electrons, shouldn't they get repelled instead? Guess where? Like that pi electron cloud has electrons. I said, the, 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 reason, the reason for that is, remember the electron uh, density on the benzene, is it high or low? So electron density over here is very low, right? Because the electrons are really distributed. So over here, the electron density is really high. So where do the electrons like to flow? They always flow from the side where they are more in number. If you have two points, right? Think of, uh, think of, if there are two points and on one side you have electrons and on the other side you have electrons, but they are more kind of like far away from each other, right? So the electrons over here will tend to get distributed onto the side where the electrons are more distributed. Is that clear? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is exactly, okay, remember there are six electrons over here. One, two, three, four, five, and six, they're overlapping. But they're like really far away. They're really, really far away and they're really spread out. And over here you have four electrons concentrated on a single atom. So the electrons would tend to sort of move towards the side where they're, they're fewer in number or they have lesser charge density. So the electrons over here will tend to shift or uh, they will repel each other. So they'll try to sort of drift and mix up with this electron cloud over here, which is why the electron density over here would massively increase. So it's not, it's, now the effect is not just a slight effect like an alkyl chain, 
now the effect is really massive. Okay, so it's a it's a highly accurate benzene ring. The electron density over here at position number two and position number six and position number four, that's really high now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So, so the thing is that now the electron density is really high. It's very accurate. So the thing would be because of the high electron density, you no longer need a catalyst. Like if a bromine molecule come, comes along, why was it? Why did you need a catalyst? Because the bromine is a non-polar molecule. It needs to be polarized because the bromine molecule is not going to be attracted to the benzene electron cloud. But now what will happen is because of the four electrons coming from oxygen and they're overlapping with this side and there's a huge electron density over here, the electrons in the benzene are going to be repelled really strongly, which is why this bromine will have a very strong negative charge. And it's going to be repelled so strongly that it's going to break away on its own. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to push it or you don't have to help it. It's just going to get knocked out. And the other bromine will, which has a positive charge, would then be very strongly attracted to the electrons in the in the pi electron cloud. So you don't need a catalyst anymore. There's going to be a strong polarization that is possible now, just exactly the same way as the polarization was possible in alkenes. So now the benzene would kind of act like an alkene. Uh, it wouldn't need any, any help from the outside. It doesn't need a catalyst. So is this idea clear? Yes. clear? Amar, Umar, could you Sam, is is this clear? Sam, is this clear? I guess so. Just in this case, uh, polarization is going to be really, really strong. So we're going to write this down because they're going to ask you why uh, this one specifically has such high polarization. So what you're going to mention is that the lone pairs on oxygen in OH, they overlap with benzene's pi electron cloud. The pi electron cloud. Which increases its charge density and also its polarizing power. So this kind of increases its charge density. <laughs> and also the polarizing power of so no catalyst is needed anymore. So no catalyst required during electrophilic substitution. So for electrophilic substitution, you no longer need any sort of catalyst. So I'm going to do the reactions of uh, Phenol, uh, the mechanism is exactly the same. There's no difference in the mechanism. So we're going to do, uh, so I'm just going to copy them, copy the old ones and just make changes on them. Just remember the reactions are now going to be very, very, uh, they're going to be very, very vigorous. So the first one, bromination, I'll just change this to from methyl benzene to a phenol. I'm going to add an OH group to it. So this is my OH group. And uh, what will happen? You don't need a catalyst anymore. So the catalyst is gone. So no catalyst is needed. All you need is Br2 aqueous. And remember, you have to mention aqueous. Or the other one is you need uh, Cl2 aqueous. If you want chlorination, you would need, you need Cl2 aqueous. No catalyst ne needed anymore. So I'm just going to write that as well. So no catalyst needed. 
And the other thing is that this, because it's so highly activated and the electron cloud uh, attracts the bromine molecule so strongly that the bromine will get substituted, substituted on all positions. On two, four, and six, all of them. So it's going to get substituted on all positions and there's only going to be one product. You don't need the other product because they're not going to be any positions left. It's going to occupy all positions. So bromine will get attached to position number two. It will also get attached to position number four. And it's also going to get attached to position number six. And the resulting, uh, there would be six HPRs that are going to be that are going to be produced. So three HPRs. Because it's so highly accurate. Is this clear? Yes. And this one is known as a 246 tribromophenol. I mean, tribromo because there are three bro tribromines that are attached. And they are attached to a phenol. Phenol is benzene with an OH. So one is attached at two, four, and six. And remember, this is a white precipitate that is formed. A white precipitate is formed. Uh, I mean, this thing is very important because this, just like bromination, is also a test for identification of, it's a test for identification of phenols. You use it to identify, identify phenol. So I leave that nitration, I'll do next time. So this one, is a test for identifying phenols. Just like alkenes, you use bromine. Now you use uh, bromine to also identify phenols, test for identifying So not only does the bromine get decolorized, but there's a white precipitate that is formed. And it happens at RTP. So if it gets decolorized and there's a white precipitate formed. So that is your test for uh, phenols. So I'll just quickly recap that uh, normal benzene, no issues. Uh, it's an electrophilic substitution reaction. Arenes, the only difference is the reaction and the conditions are kind of the same, except arenes have a very slight electron negative effect, very slightly faster. So the electron density becomes higher at position number two, four, and six. Bromine gets attached to either position number two or position number four. Same with nitration. The NO2 gets attached to either position number two or position number four. But when it comes to phenol, the electron, it's a highly activated benzene ring or... Uh, as it's a highly accurate benzene ring. And uh, the other thing is, uh, the polarizing power of benzene increases massively. So you don't need a catalyst anymore, which is why you just have to add Br2, that's it. Br2 aqueous, specifically aqueous. Nothing else is needed. And the substitution will happen. Let's uh, continue with electrophilic substitution in the next class. I'll share video lectures of the previous lectures as well. Any questions in here? Okay, then everyone.